Welcome to Semper Fi. I'm your host, Mark Bonstein, or as I was commonly referred to as Staff Sergeant B. Going to have my guest coming on in a moment. First, we're going to do what happened on July 14th in U.S. military history. In the Marine Corps in 1950, the U.S. Marines sailed from San Diego for Korea and the, the, first, and the, the conflict. And in the Army in 1950, the U.S. 551st Field Artillery Battalion, dubbed the Triple Nickel, was overrun and lost 300 soldiers. They never did specify exactly where. And in the Navy in 1952, lying of keel of USS Forsterland at the first 5900th ton aircraft crew was initiated. And nothing happened in the uh, Air Force or the Coast Guard on that day. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it don't. My next guest is not a veteran, and I'm kind of stepping out of character on this one. I know I usually uh, interview veterans, but she does make quilts for veterans, and I found that pretty intriguing, so I want her to be on the show. So please welcome Barb Johnston. Welcome to Hi. the show. Uh, so just want to quickly, what initiated you to get into doing quilts? Well, I started making quilts back in 1984, um, when I was recovering from cancer surgery, my aunt had showed me a flyer of a quilt charity. And even though I had made a few quilts and stuff for family use, I never made them to great volume. And that just got more and more and more and more involved. And then later, about a year later, my mom passed away. And before she passed away, she told me to just keep making quilts that people needed them. So somewhat in that vein, and also myself, I've seen how quilts are a fabric hug. They physically touch someone in need. If it's a person with cancer or whatever the case is for someone in need, a quilt actually touches them. And it's something um, either you like to do or you don't like to do. It's a hobby for me that's somewhat of an obsession at times. Um, last year in November on Veterans Day, we gave out 98 quilts at Papa Willie's over on 372 for veterans in Pahrump. All right. We've gone away from just Quilts for Cancer. Quilts for Cancer is our legal name. However, we've gone also into, we make quilts for those in hospice, in the nursing home, um, and of course still children with cancer because we have about 200 new cases a year in Southern Nevada. Yeah, I was going through the paper and I seen your article that you do quilts for veterans. What made you want to focus on veterans? Well, over the last four years, my husband and I have made 32 trips to La Jolla VA Hospital for surgeries and treatment. Um, twice we had to call the family in because they didn't think he was going to make it. And the first time we were there was Easter Sunday. And he was in a ward. And there were three other men in that ward, all from out of state, all who had no one. There I was, the only spouse or family member on Easter Sunday. And it made me realize how many other veterans just don't have someone with them at all times, not just in La Jolla. And it's a beautiful hospital, it's a wonderful hospital. But it made me realize that a lot of the veterans we have, I can't say are forgotten, but there's a couple of programs for the uh, troops that are coming home, but there's not as much out there for veterans that are more a long-term veteran. Um, so that's why we've kind of just gone into it a little more. And plus, living in Pahrump, in Nye County, we have a lot of veterans. Estimated 5,000. Yeah, I've even heard <laughs> higher than that. I mean, it's a big part of our population. I'm just being generous right now, I but mean, I've heard as low, over 5,000 veterans. Yeah, I've heard, yeah. I mean, it's a big part of our population. Um, and a lot of times, like I said, you hear about what's going on to the troops um, and the troop homecomings, but some of the veterans feel a little bit left out. And there's a lot of veterans in need, not just the homeless veterans that we have, but there's a lot of veterans that are so close to being homeless. And the least we can do is do something that gives them a little bit of comfort. That was real nice that you do that. Do they? Where do they go to pick these up? I know you don't, you can't afford to drive around and deliver them all day. No, we take them here in Pahrump. Uh, just a few weeks ago, we delivered, I think it was 30 or 40, to the Veterans Clinic here in Pahrump on Calvada. All right. I 
can't remember the number. I mean, I can drive to the VA <laughs> clinic, but don't ask me the mailing address. And that same day, we took some to Evergreen and Hospice as well. Okay, but other than that, do they usually, you just give them to other people that right, initiate them out? Or? Even though we're not a medical treating f firm or anything like that, we realize with the HIPAA laws and privacy laws, we just go along with it. Now, Veterans Day last year at Papa Willie's, we asked for some type of ID. And there again, you show me a veteran's card, I basically know what a veteran's card is. Don't ask me to remember your name if I've never met you before, but yeah, we were, it was very low key just because we wanted to make sure veterans got them on that particular well, What else day. would they have to show if they didn't have an ID card? Two people came in with their DD-214s, oh, believe it or go. not. And you, except I mean, dog if, tags? <laughs> we didn't have to go that far. I mean, pretty much we felt uh, we just needed a little bit of something because for the people that donate, being a charity, we have to be, we're responsible for them. That if we're going to do this for veterans, we want to make sure it goes to veterans. That's very admirable. I mean, one or two could have slipped through. Sure, it can happen. Uh, yeah. But you, you do know. these alone, or do you have a team? We have a group of volunteers. Uh, most of our volunteers are in the wintertime with the snowbirds. Okay. But we do have a handful of people here in Pahrump, like myself, that are kind of obsessed with it and just sewing. <laughs> and it's relaxing. Fabric doesn't talk back to you. <laughs> <laughs> you shut it up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How long does it usually take to make uh, make one? It depends. Depending on the quilt you're making, it can take from 8 to 20 hours. It just depends what you're making. Really? You Average know, you size? You make them smaller? You make um, them big? Or? Right now what we're working on is a special project for the VA hospital that's soon to open, or this winter, next spring, in okay. Las Vegas. We're working on 300 quilts, and they'll be approximately 50 by 70 little bit smaller than a twin size but enough to cover you when you're in that hospital bed and the goal is to have one on each bed so the first patient every room has one when it opens i must make you feel good when you walk in there and well it, it'll be a first for va hospital opening if we can get it done really which you're gonna I've, have them already sitting on the beds oh no because of how they have to transfer patients they'll be in a bag hanging or in the nightstand you know they'll be clipped to the bed or something because of say you're coming in from emergency they can't have it on the bed because of moving you in okay and that makes sense so it will either be in a bag hung on the side of the bed or in the nightstand that sounds really nice you know so it would be a first and i want to see it done for nevada to have the first va hospital have a quilt on for every veteran you know, and then we'll keep up as we, you know, not as much in one time, but then when whoever wants to make a couple quilts, you know, not only quilts, there's a, there's a long list that the VA hospital can use in comfort items. Sounds really good. And it, uh, you're getting a head start on it right now or are you having oh, a yeah. start? Oh, yeah, we, we've been working um, <laughs> because it does take a while. I mean, 300 quilts is a huge undertaking. <laughs> it's a big number. Big it's demand. a big number. Um, we're getting there. I think we're going to make it. Um, the biggest hurdle now is funding because the supplies have gone up so much. The batting cost has gone up about 30%. And there's just not much you can do. I mean, Mother Nature took out cotton crops around the world and what was left just increases in price. That's something that yeah, comes, comes in demand. Right. And like everything and else that we're going And the quilt fabric through. you're show, sewing with is cotton because it stands up much better than anything else and you can piece it together it doesn't shrink it doesn't stretch you know so you need cotton on cotton basically so it blends well and again that's gone up in price what do you figure the estimate to make one quilt runs you about we say we suggest fifty dollars as a donation for these larger quilts at our cost buying wholesale if you were to walk into a quilt shop you might triple that but we do have extreme volume buying being a 501c3. So you can make how many, out of $50, you make how many quilts out of that? Or well, that that's covers, just one. that's just one. Oof. That's just one. That's just one. They're expensive. They, they are expensive. <laughs> uh, once we get done and truck these into Las Vegas, it's going to be almost a 30000 retail value, if not more, on these quilts. Now, you just make many 
increment patterns? You take requests if somebody was to bring in uh, and we say... We don't take requests because we don't know who's actually getting these quilts. And you brought some in. We did bring some in. This is one that a designer did for this project. It's all red, white, and blue See, with that's the so gold nice. blended in. Um, this one would take a little bit more because of the piecing and things like that. But you can see, even for a gentleman, when you're not feeling well, this is still going to be enough to, you know, keep you warm. And when you go home with it, especially if you're in a recliner or a sofa, if you're laying around when you're recovering, it's just what you need. Even today in the summer heat, you've got air conditioning, you want something. And this also is a size that can be washed in a typical home washer. You know, and that's one thing. They have to be made with love and machine washable. Those are our two requirements. And it just you just make this yourself. There's not two people working on this? Um, actually, I didn't make this one. A couple of friends in Vegas made this one. But they would, two right. people work on one or just one works on one? Well, typically, one works on one. We do have days where we get together and do different steps together. Like we might cut fabric one day or, you know, certain things. But with everyone's work schedule, it's really difficult to get everyone together. And here's a much simpler one. Why does this one feel a lot lighter than Just the because other? of the f batting. Okay. Because that one felt heavy, and this one yeah. feels like a real lightweight one. Yeah. But this is a very simple scrappy, because in the end, you get all these little pieces, and what do you do with them? You make a scrappy quilt. <laughs> is that what you call it, a scrappy quilt? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this one, the red, white, and blue with the gold accents blended. This one's probably got 30 pieces, 30 colors. But because there's so many, it blends up and it's a scrappy quilt. But the scraps are brand new fabric, so it holds up well. We're going to take a quick break. And right, we're going to come back and uh, hear a little bit more about our quilts and giving them to uh, veterans. So get a cup of coffee and join us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. Just talking to my guest, Barb Johnston. We just got a little ahead of ourselves. Uh, like I was saying earlier in the show, kind of going out of character. I'm interviewing somebody who is not in the military, but she is doing for veterans a, a very worthy cause, which is uh, quilts for veterans. So I felt it necessary to bring her on the show, seeing as how she takes so much time out of her day to make these quilts and donate them to veterans and other organizations. I, I just, I think it was nice. And we were just touching on uh, the quilts, how much time it takes her to do it, and she brought a couple samples in, so um, we'll pick up where we left off, and uh, a little bit more about your quilts for veterans. All right, well, we also, um, when I'm not at the sewing machine and I'm trying to rest or relax, we, I also do a lot of knitting along with some other people. Last year through the DAV and VFW, the stand down in Ken Shockley's office, the county service officer, We've taken in knit caps and afghans. I mean, there's a lot of people that just want something simple to do, like how can I help? I can't sew a whole quilt. I can't afford a donation, but I got boxes of yarn. It's like, well, then you can make simple caps. Or one thing the hospitals need are stump covers, which a lot of people kind of shy off of. But after amputation, um, this goes over the medical bandage just to kind of conceal it and look a little nicer. And it's like a heelless sock and you need them in different sizes depending on the veteran's amputation is it at an ankle mid calf below the knee above the knee so that's something else we have patterns for so if anyone likes to knit and has yarn we can put you to work for the veterans um, pretty soon the veterans hospital in las vegas will be having full list of what they can use uh, for comfort items because the one thing that shocked me at the va hospital the first trip jim went we didn't take soaps and toothbrushes and things like that. And they don't supply that, only on demand. If you have none, they'll hunt for some. 
They're there only for medical services and because of budgets, they don't have it. Now, in the spring, we're gonna have a drive here in Pahrump to get those individual items for our veterans. And when I say our veterans, all the veterans here in Pahrump, their first step will be the Las Vegas VA hospital, which we just don't have now. So that's a way you can think, or if you get those little bottles of shampoo and soap and toothpaste in your travel, save them up, because come springtime, we're gonna have a drive for them. But on the quilts, this weekend is one of our big fundraisers. Because of the cost of supplies going up, we need donations, and like everyone else, it's very difficult at this time in the economy. But Mike Macy is coming back to Pahrump. He was here last fall. This is his second trip for the Veterans Quilt Project. He was here last year. Um, it was a little bit later in the year. I think it was September. Mike himself is a veteran, but I'm sorry to say I don't know which branch of the service. Uh, the tournament is a two-day tournament for local pool players. Um, I think there's one or two spots left in that tournament. You have to call Sherry Dalton, and if you are play pool, you know Sherry, or you can call me and I can forward the message. But at one o'clock Saturday, the 16th, at the Hideaway, which is on South Pahrump Valley Boulevard. Pahrump Valley Boulevard takes a little bitty jog across Gamebird, and you come down Pahrump Valley Boulevard, and it's the first set of buildings on your right. And at one o'clock, Mike Macy, who is the 17 times world trick shot artist, puts on a show. And it is truly amazing what he can do with a pool cue and pool balls. And he sets them different ways. And not only does he get the ball going up and down cues, he'll even pop them off the table and into a boot. I mean, it's amazing what this guy can do. There is no charge for the show. We will have a donation bucket there as well as raffles. We have a lot of pool-related equipment um, and pool cues to give out in this raffle. And today, um, there is a business expo today and tomorrow in Las Vegas. You have to be in the industry to go. It's not open to the public. Mike Macy himself is going around with Sherry Dalton to get d more items for our raffle. He just said we didn't have enough. He was going to get more. I mean, and he is a terrific guy. I had seen him before at pool shows, but last year we actually got to chat, visit. You would just come down, sit, talk with him. You'd have no idea of this man's title. or Real down to earth and approachable. Real down to earth, very, very approachable. <laughs> sit there, have grape juice is his drink of choice. <laughs> but he does have wine. He does, he <laughs> did have a wine. But yes, um, and he's just one of the guys. and. Also, about 2 o'clock, once he finishes his show, for $10 of a donation that goes to the charity, you can play him in nine ball. Now, truthfully, chances of you winning, you could win against Mike Macy, but let's face it, he's one of the world's best. But it has been done. It has been done. And he'll give you special prizes, and we'll get f all kinds of photos of you if you beat them. Um, I try my best. I'm not a pro, but I try my best to get a picture of everyone that plays him. And then I put them up so people can download them or get copies if they wish. So that's only for $10. And it's, it's fun. And how often do you get this type of caliber person to Pahrump? Yeah, really. Us being the little sleepy town that we are, <laughs> getting the... Uh... Well, you hit the right person and for the right reason, and that's it. You know, so we're hoping to raise about a thousand dollars this weekend, and all that money will go to, to supplies, batting and backing primarily because we have a lot of people that send in fabric that they're no longer using, or what's called a remnant. They might have a few, you know, a quarter yard of this, a half yard of this. So we have enough material for the top of the quilts. We don't have enough for the backs and the batting. So that's okay. what the funding is for. And this will help you achieve your three hundred on your yes. <laughs> Yes. Oh, uh, we're going to make it no matter what. You can't, you know, I needed to have almost a third of the funds committed before I'd commit to VA. I would not commit to VA, and I committed about a year ago, uh, that we would have these quilts before I knew I was at least a third of the way there. Because wow. I, I figured we got to have that. Then the next third came in. Now we're on our last. But I'm sure we're going to get it somehow, you know. Earlier, you said you did have a team. You never said how many of you, six, oh, the, five? Oh, there's probably about eight, ten of us here in Pahrump that work on them 
Okay, so you know, some more than others, depending on jobs and family, and you know, life gets in the way sometimes. Yeah. Now, do you use meat? In the general uh, area, or everybody just does it at their own they homes? They do it at their own home, and then we meet every couple of months. And then you just kind of get together. And they give them all to you, or they take Yes, we them? get them. Well, some people just tie the quilts. Like, some of these are tied, so some people come and get quilts and tie them. They don't, you know, machine quilt. And they can be tied securely, and it does hold up. You know, so there's different stages. It depends on who is doing what. But there's many steps people can do. Um, I've been in and out quite a bit myself. Our son had a very tragic accident, so I've kind of been away from it for a while. Um, I'm just kind of getting caught up again, um, so I can sit and sew by the hour. <laughs> but it keeps me busy, keeps me out of trouble. I'm retired, I'm unemployed, and I have no little children at home, so I can sit and sew. That sounds like it's a peaceful day for you. It works. It works. And Jim, my husband, who is a veteran, will joke that he knows I'm feeling well when I'm sitting and sewing. You oh, know? and if you're not, then there's a problem. Well, pretty much. <laughs> and I've, I have had some major surgeries the last couple of years, so there's been months where I just couldn't sew. Oh, really? You know, so. Let's start working on the joints or arthritis? Uh, or no? no, some other things. We've yeah. had some major lung surgery. And, Oof. Okay. Yeah, that one really tied me <laughs> I'd say that put you down for oh, a no. bit. Oh, no. The joints, no. Those are just injections. Those I'll take any day. <laughs> injections and you're done, right? Strong shot. <laughs> oh, yeah. But they work. They work. Yeah. So there are many ways, again, like I say, our veterans, so many of them, um, and I've seen firsthand when you go to La Jolla, and it's the hospital where Jim's gone, I've taken quilts there, and I've taken bags, and there they wanted cards. Decks of cards were worth their weight in gold. Playing cards? Playing cards. Well, they don't have mm. casinos. <laughs> so I scrounged up a few decks of cards, a few dozen really, um, and took them, and they loved them. And the same thing with the quilts, because at HIPAA laws, when you take things to a hospital, you leave it with, depending on the person in the hospital, which department. And it wasn't the next day I saw one of these simple quilts that I brought in, and there was a guy in x-ray, because I walked down you know, with Jim in the wheelchair, and he was commenting how great this quilt was. And it's like, it's not that great, it's just a simple quilt. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe to you. You know, but they do appreciate it. And they know? just won't let you walk from room to room and no. let you give them. That's too bad, because, no. you know, it'd be nice no. to see the look not on your face. Not any longer. In years past, we could have. Yeah, I always thought they used to be able to do that. You can't anymore. That's too bad, because um, I know it's m more gratifying for you to See the look on her face is. when you... It is, but even last year over to Papa Willie's, the veterans, you know, saying thank you. And one of our volunteers who's in her late 80s saw one of the veterans pick out one of her quilts, and she just, she couldn't believe it. She couldn't believe it, that here's these tables of quilts, and he picked that one. <laughs> and it was one she made. And it does, it does make you feel very well. But I just don't feel we can do enough... Um, for the veterans and our troops, because we do some, when I have time, I send some things to the troops also. That's very nice. Well, at one time we had seven in our family um, in theater in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Kuwait. So it's like, I remember taking those seven boxes at a time saying, I need the credit card. <laughs> <laughs> that was before the discount. Even now, even with the discount, to send seven boxes is a lot. I can but, imagine that uh, postage and sending it. Uh. Yeah, but we were with a family that could send it, and different of the family members were sent. You know, it's like you always had to send something they had to share. They could never keep the entire box. They had to share something. <laughs> well, whenever we used to get care packages over when I was in, over in Kuwait, it was nice. Yeah. Especially when it was sent to all the troops, and they crack it open, and everybody... Yeah. If somebody else didn't like this, or somebody that yeah, did... You and just was send a, stuff over. And there was a little note in there just to everybody. Yeah. You know, and there'd be toiletry articles or cards. Yeah, cards are well liked. Well, now, I'm assuming, thank you cards, not yeah, playing oh, cards. Okay. But I'm assuming Las Vegas is not going to have a problem getting playing cards. I would hope <laughs> not. <laughs> Makes you think so. <laughs> trying to tell me about this place. No, <laughs> no, you know. Well, we're coming down to the last minute on the show. I got Jeff telling me, wind it down. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank my guests for being on the show. And I usually well, give these you. out to my veterans. But oh. this is one of my chips I give out to all the veterans. And like I said, I thank appreciate you. you being on the show and doing what you do for our vets. Well, thank you. Quilts for vets, that's, I, I like it. It's very, uh, 
very admirable. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that you do that. Well, it was nice enough that much. I wanted you on the show. Yeah. And hopefully you can come down Saturday. Meet Mr. I, I'd, Macy. I'd like to. You know, see, I, I work on Saturdays. You know, this is my days off. But you know, I get off. They, they let me get the clock out and go home. Because <laughs> so. he will be there throughout the day, even though his show is over. He will be there throughout the two days. All right, and I like to drop down and drop down and see him. Uh, so remember, that's the uh, wind down of our show. If you have a like to be on my show, give me a call at 513-2056. You have a story. I like to hear it and share it with everyone else. Till next week, Simplify. We'll see you then. Thank you for being